Live. From Television City in Hollywood, the Plymouth Division of Chrysler Corporation. And the Plymouth Dealers of America, who proudly display the style leader. The ride leader. The economy leader. And your best car buy. Plymouth for 1957. Accepted and acclaimed as the most wanted car in America today. Plymouth for 1957 presents... Climax. Tonight, starring... Robert Preston. Diana Lynn. Kurt Kasnar. And now your host for Chrysler Corporation, Bill London. Good evening. Tonight, a lieutenant of homicide and a vengeful woman track a pain rack killer as he prowls the city streets. Where the trail will lead, no one knows. All they do know is that they're in a deadly race against time and terror. And now, on climax, Trail of Terror. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Felton, the doctor's been delayed. All right, I'll wait. He's not back yet. Want him for anything special, Mrs. Morton? Anything special? Everything is special, but I'll wait, too. Schedule. Mm, got held up. Emergency. At the library, one of the readers suddenly developed a case of astigmatism. Well, you know, research. Life blood of medicine, soul of progress. And despair of efficiency. <laughs> Mrs. Felton, please. Is hey, my wife home? Yes, doctor, since five o'clock. Oh, well, good evening, Mrs. Pritchard. Good evening. Oh, it is late, Miss Nolan. Past hours. You can run along. Oh, I don't mind. Go on, go home. I'll handle it. Good night, Doctor. Good night. Well, Mrs. Pritchard, how are you coming along? Your husband's still accusing you of trying to keep get out of cooking for it? Oh, excuse me. Good night, Doctor. Good night. out there. Well, what can I do for you? I, uh, I don't believe I've seen you before, have you? Your hands. What's your name? Who are you? Uh, are you related to the figure eight woman? Well, now, 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 wait. It, it, it's important that you understand. Wait, please!
I've been trying to think of arguments or anything like that, but I, I can't even think of anybody who didn't like Dr. Morton. Nobody threatened him? No letters or anything of that kind? Letters? He gets hundreds and hundreds of them, but not threatening letters. Well, how about a patient who might have thought he'd gotten a bad shake from the doc? No. Uh, the wrong diagnosis. A professional colleague he had consulted on a case. No. Personal friends, his private life. Two bullets, point blank, Lieutenant, about five feet away. One in the heart, one in the head. The doc must have been a hard worker. Mess of research books on his desk. That's oh. for his porphyria work. What? What's porphyria? Well, well it's an inherited condition. Abdominal pains, sensitive skin on back of hands. It's rather rare. Well, I'll do my report out at the station. See you later. Now, when you left, Miss Nolan, there were five patients waiting to see the doctor. Yes. All with appointments? Yes. And no one you didn't know? No, sir. All right, Miss Nolan, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Yes, sir. Mrs. Morton, I'm sorry. I should have stayed. If I'd been here... I was here. I'm sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Morton. It's all right. Are you uh, up to some questioning? I'll be brief. Can we go in there? Over here. Now, there were five patients waiting with appointments to see the doctor. The last patient, a Miss Felton, said that when she came out of the doctor's office, however, someone else was waiting, a sixth person. She couldn't identify him, but she did say she thought she caught a glimpse of you turning back into this room. Yes. Well, we're trying to establish the identity of this sixth person. Will you give me a description of him, please? I can't. I was on my way into my husband's office and I saw this person sitting there, so I turned around and I went back to the kitchen. Didn't you get any kind of look at him? I can't remember what he looked like. Old, young, mustache? I don't know. Well, what kind of suit? Dark, light? I don't know. He was facing you, wasn't he? How about his voice? Did he say anything? No. Okay, Mrs. Morton. Y you see, I was thinking about something else. I was thinking about Frank. Dinner was almost ready, and then I wanted to tell him to eat. Sure, it's okay. Is anybody going to stay here with you tonight? Mrs. Morton, huh? is somebody going to stay here with you tonight? No. You should have somebody around. You shouldn't be alone at a time like this. Somebody doesn't keep you from being alone. He's as tight as a drum. What did you find in here? I can't latch onto a motive. The doc was well liked, seems to have been a regular guy. Didn't hire or fire anyone for years. Nothing remarkable at the hospital, the New Bedford Hospital. He was on the staff there. No enemies? Well, somebody had to hate him. Somebody killed him. Guess I'll have to start going through his papers. Well, you've got a big job ahead of you. The doc was what you'd call a prolific correspondent. <laughs> All set, boys? All set. Well, don't work too late, Lieutenant. See you tomorrow, Russ. Right. Sleep. 
You know, this is quite a thing your husband was doing with this porphyria. How he found out that somebody with porphyria could be partially paralyzed and die if they take certain medication, the barbiturates. He was tracing back the family tree of those people with porphyria to warn them. And this letter he was sending out all over the world. Lieutenant, I, I wanted to tell you that I've been trying to remember. I'm not stupid. I, I know that man must have been the one. Sure. And I've tried. I... I just can't... I, 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 I look straight at him. Well, I mean, I'm, I must have looked straight at him. Sometimes when we try too hard, a door closes in our minds. Why would he kill Frank? I mean, Frank was such a good man. Why would he take my husband away from me? Mrs. Morton, there's no answer to that. And it's only when you stop asking that it gets quiet inside. Good night, Mrs. Morton. Typically. Morning, man. Hi, Russ. Miss Nolan. What got the doc started on his porphyria research? Well, this young woman came in, Emily Figueredo, a porphyric. A patient? Well, tell me about her. Well, she'd just come up to this country recently from Brazil. Her husband had died and she had little money. They'd operated on her down there. She had terrible abdominal pains all her life. They'd given her a barbiturate anesthetic. Oh. They didn't know at the time. Nobody knew about the reaction. It took her 16 weeks just to get out of the hospital because of the operation, the effect of the anesthetic, not the porphyria. Well, then what? She came here to Dr. Morton. But why Dr. Morton? Why not some other doctor? Dr. Morton specialized in internal medicine, Lieutenant. Her principal complaint was the terrible abdominal pains along with the hysteria and emotional imbalance. Well... Where is she now? When was the last time you saw her? Eleven months ago. What? The last time I saw her. As you can see on the card, Lieutenant, she died. You, you see, a porphyric mustn't ever take any of the barbecues. Mm -hmm. There was no way to save her. The damage had been done before she came to us. Good morning, Mrs. Morton. Oh, Mrs. Morton. You've been here all night, Lieutenant? I owe you a night's lodging. I fell asleep at the desk. Would you like some coffee? Uh, none for me, thanks, Mrs. Morton. I just stopped here on my way to the station. I've got to check with the lab boys. Have you made any progress? We're working, Mrs. Morton. I keep trying. Well, don't press it. It'll come to you. There have been some messages. Friends. I've spoken to the ones I want to speak to. And, Lieutenant, if you stayed because of me, uh, because you were worried about me or something, it's all right. I'm, I'm all right now. Thank you for the coffee, Mrs. Morton. Has she been like this since yesterday? Like what? Oh, frozen up. How did she used to be? She was always such a happy person. She used to laugh all the time. I'd like to see her cry just once.
startle you? I'm sorry. I was out front sending the patrolman home. But I'm afraid you're going to be stuck with me for a while. I still have a lot of work to do here. You still doing research? You know, it is fascinating what your husband was doing. Tracing back the family line of this Emily Figueredo. Corresponding with 500 people. Now listen to me. I don't care about prophyrics or letters or people all over the world. I don't care about anything except getting the killer. I want him to pay for what he did. I want him dead. It's my job to catch him, Mrs. Morton. Well, then I suggest you do it. different sets. Well, who's identifying them? Well, I don't think Bonaventure and Shoemaker are busy. Ask the captain if we can't use them. We'll have to follow up every print. Doctor. Hold on. No, I'm not the doctor. Is that front door open? Well, I'll call you later, Russ. Check with the captain, will you? You're not doctor in doctor office? No, the, the doctor is dead. I'm just doing some work here. If you need a doctor, you better check the phone book for the nearest one. Are those letters doctor right? You're, you're a porphyric. You must have got one of the letters. Now put that gun away. What do you do with letters? I'm a police officer. Put that gun away and talk to me. You're a porphyric and I've got a lot to tell you. Doctor, tell my Emily. Hi. Our snow is to remind you of Operation Snowball going on at your Plymouth dealers right now. You know, Plymouth sales are really snowballing. And because of this ever-increasing volume of sales, your Plymouth dealer can offer you terrific savings on the one car that's snowballing. Snowballing! Snowballing! Plymouth! This beautiful Plymouth Belvedere four-door sedan is the family car with all the luxury and comfort of the most expensive automobiles on the road. Yet Plymouth gives you this plus sensational torsion air ride at its traditional low price. Now, here's another three years ahead Plymouth you see everywhere. The fabulous Belvedere two-door hardtop. A masterpiece of flight sweep styling. The look of tomorrow that's yours today. Like all Plymouth cars, it brings such exclusive features as total contact brakes, full-time power steering, and push-button drive. And here's the Plymouth with snowballing popularity among budget-minded folks. Savoy four-door hardtop. Strikingly beautiful with economy of operation. Proved by the 1957 Mobile Gas Economy Run, where Plymouth took first place in its class. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever your needs, there's a beautiful new Plymouth waiting for you at your Plymouth dealers right now. You're so right, Mary. 
<laughs> Friends, Plymouth sales are really snowballing, so look ahead, buy ahead, buy Plymouth. Own more of the future right now. <laughs> and now we return to the second act of Climax, tonight starring Diana Lynn, Robert Preston, and Kurt Kasner. What time is it? A little after five o'clock. What happened? Well, the killer paid me a little visit. What? As he was looking for something. Probably a letter. Your husband sent warning letters to all the porphyrics he had traced. One of them answered in person, then he came back now to destroy any record. Hello. This is Lieutenant Hope speaking. I got an APB I want to get out. Wanted for a homicide. Male, 5'10", 190, uh, 55, 60 years old, stoop-shouldered, high cheekbones, sunburnt, black hair streaked with gray, uh, brown suit, brown shirt, black tie, no scars except on the backs of his hands. He speaks with a heavy accent, probably Spanish or Portuguese. The man's a porphyric. P-O-R-P-H-Y-R-I-C. Dangerous. Under pain, he can be violent, even hysterical. Yeah, well, get it right out, will you? You remember him now, don't you? Like a photograph. I hate him, you know? I hate him so I can feel it in my throat, on my mouth. Sure. Vicious. The man's sick, Mrs. Morton. He's a killer. Well, nothing is ever black and white. Sure, he's a killer. What is the matter with you? How can you possibly be so calm and dispassionate about You it? just relax, Mrs. Morton. We'll get him. It's just a matter of time now. <laughs> The Bureau of Immigration to see Lieutenant Hogue. Mr. Keeley. Yes, that is correct. I'm Hogue. How do you do? How do you do? Come in here, please. May I uh, sit down? Yes, please do. What happened, Lieutenant? Cut yourself shaving? This is the most unusual procedure. You said there was some urgency in the investigation. I undertook this trip on my own time. The police department thanks you. <clears throat> now, the information you seek. It will require a bit of doing on short notice like this. Here are the records of one Emily Hortense Figueredo. Came to this country 14 months ago, age 28, no relations here. Husband deceased. Uh, uh, Sergeant Russell, Mr. Keelty. How do you do? Sergeant. Mother deceased. A father living in Boa Vista, Pernambuco, Brazil. A father? Yes. Living in Brazil. No record of his having entered this country. No. I said no relations here. You were going to get me a list of all the people who had been admitted to this country from Brazil in the last year and a half. Oh, yes. I have it. Here it is. Well, that's quite a list. And quite complete. Anything else, Lieutenant? I believe that's what you asked for. Let me tell you our problem, Mr. Keelty. You know that Emily Figueredo is dead. Well, she died from taking a barbiturate anesthetic. She was a porphyric. A porphyria is a rather rare inherited condition passed down from generation to generation. She came to this country to see an American doctor about it. It happened to be a Dr. Morton. Her dying was no fault of the doctors, but to someone out of the country it might have seemed to be. Dr. Morton was murdered the day before yesterday. Oh, and Russ, we have evidence that his murderer is a porphyric too. You're inferring he's a relative of Emily Figueredo's. I also saw him. I'd take him to be 55 or 60 years old, just about the right age to be Emily's father. Why couldn't the murderer be some other prefer? It could, but it would be an extraordinary coincidence. No, the reason I called on you, Mr. Keelty, Emily died more than 11 months ago. I thought, why would the killer wait so long for his revenge? If it was revenge. Oh, yes, it was. And I thought, the only reason might be if he couldn't get at the doctor. 
And one reason he might not be able to get at the doctor would be if he were not in this country and had to make arrangements to get here. That's why I wanted this information from the immigration department. You see, Mr. Kielty? Perfectly. From your point of view, your logic is flawless. From mine, however, it is erroneous. My father's in Boa Vista, Brazil. Figueredo. Is that Emily's maiden name? No, sir. Duclerc. There is no Duclerc on the list. Well, then one of us must be wrong. It would seem so. What if he were in this country without your knowing it, Mr. Keelty? If he was going to come into this country illegally, why wait 11 months, as you point out? Perhaps he entered under an alias. Perhaps one of these is an alias. Possible, Mr. Keelty? Anything is possible, but I would say it is improbable. Well, that's our job here. Checking out improbabilities. Thank you, Mr. Keelty. Not at all, Lieutenant. Sergeant? Mr. Keelty? Everything perfectly clear, Russ? No, but you'll explain it to me, even to the All Points Bulletin. Mm. What happened to your face? Get caught in a cement mixer? Oh, Miss Nolan, this is Lieutenant Hogue. I wonder if you'd do me a favor. I'm worried about Mrs. Morton. She needs somebody around. She's very distraught, and perhaps you can help her. Fine, thanks. Tell her I asked her to I asked you to stay with her for a, for a while. Thank you. Get Phillips and Bonaventure and Shoemaker. We've got to get started on this list. Pat Edwards. I told you I didn't want to speak to anybody. Make my excuses. I'm sorry, Miss Edwards. I think in a day or two. Yes, I'll tell her. Just wanted to know if there was anything she could do to help. Yes, not call anymore. I've been meaning to ask you, Miss Nolan. When we went to Europe in 53, did we come back the latter part of August, or was it the first of September? Well, let me see, that was the year Frank gave me my ring. That was on my birthday, and that's the 5th of September. Mrs. Morton. Oh, what a wonderful trip that was, Miss Nolan. It was our honeymoon, you know. We couldn't afford it when we were first married, and, and Frank promised me that... Mrs. Morton, I don't think you ought to think about things like that. Did you know that you could fall in love with a man all over again after you'd been married to him for eight years? Did you know that, Miss Nolan? Oh, I mean, a love that's deeper and more sure. A love that nothing can ever take away. My dear, I don't think you should dwell so much on the past. Well, on the past? Yes. What you need now is to find some new interest. I don't need anything. I meant... I know what you meant. You meant I shouldn't think about Frank. Just not too much. Look into the future a bit. Oh, I know it's hard. I don't want your pity, Miss Nolan. I don't want Lieutenant Hogue's solicitude, either. Did he send you here to keep an eye out on me? Does he think I can't be trusted alone or something? I think he just wanted to be sure you have everything you need. I need to be by myself. I don't need you. Or him or friends or relatives. I need to be alone. Mrs. Morton. Don't you understand me, Miss Nolan? Go home. Almost through with my part of the list, Russ. Ah, just four more to go and I'll be in. Sergeant Russell. Oh, hello, Bonaventure. Yeah, just a second. Melton, negative. Alvarez, 
negative. Wolf, Struthers, Morabito, all negative. Okay, Bonaventure, come on in. We'll probably need you here. Man's name is Santo, Espirito Santo. Sure, he lives here. He's been living here almost a week, but he ain't in. I expect him back about a dinner time. He always comes in about that time. Thank you. Prego. Here's your dish, dear. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hello. Hello, operator. Is this the St. Louis operator? I've got a call in for Pedro Torindo. Address, 914 East Buffington. Yeah. What'd they say? Oh, I see. Thanks. Went back to Brazil two months ago. How'd you make out? Just one left, Santo, and he isn't in. Who went back to Brazil? The last name on my list. Oh. Philip Shoemaker, Bonaventure, all checked in, all clear. So far, I've spent $115.80 of the city's money on long-distance calls with nothing to show for it. Oh, yeah, there's still that call to Boa Vista, Brazil. We haven't been able to get in touch with the girl's father down there yet. Uh, get Bonaventure. We'll need his Portuguese. He's standing by. We've got to work fast, Russ. I've been doing a lot of reading on this Porphyria thing. Sometimes, under certain circumstances, a Porphyric's emotional balance goes haywire. You can't tell what he'll do. Well, it's a good thing we're closing in on him. Now, if we are. What if this Duke Clerk really is in South America someplace? Then who's our boy? We'll have to start all over. And time's against us, Russ. There you are, mister. Hey, what's the big idea? But, but... What's that, mister? But whiskey burn inside. Yeah, well, you can take your complaints for a walk. All of our bar whiskey here is four years old. What's the matter with that guy? He'd like to kill me. He must be off his rocker or something. Yeah, hello. Yes, operator, this is Bonaventure. Yeah. It's the uh, call into to uh, Mr. Brazil. Hello? Ah. Hello? You care to hear Queen Juan de Clara? No, it's time, Bovista. Oh, it's time, Natal. Há muito tempo. Escute, a donde está vivendo em Natal? Com qual família? Algum modo de achá-lo? Sim. Muito obrigado. John the clerk is not in Boa Vista. He's visiting Natal. He's away from home. How long has he been away from home? Several weeks, but they expect him back soon. Was there no way to reach him in Natal? No. He was staying with some people by the name of Santo, but there's no way to reach them by phone. Santo! Espirito Santo! The last name on my list! Espirito Santo! This may be the break we're looking for! Bonaventure speaking. Yeah, sir. Just a moment. Okay, what's the name of the bar? Yeah, Elbow Room. And somebody assaulted the bar. Oh, it's a you, Mr. Santo. Somebody was <coughs> looking for... Something wrong, eh? <laughs> What do you take for a head pain? My prescription pills. Uh -huh. Terrible pain here. Momento, you wait. I get the fix. Here. Hey, uh, Mr. Santo, you don't take all of them at one time. What's uh, wrong, eh? What's the matter with you? Look, uh, mister, with such a real bad pain like that, you should go see the doc, no? <laughs> Is Mr. Santo home yet, ma'am? Remember, I was here before. See, si, see. Si. No, sir, not there. He was here, but he left. Where did he go, do you know? We're police officers. <gasps> He's got a real bad pain in his stomach. He took all of my prescription pills. Oh, he he took pills? Sure Sorry, sick. I told him he should go see the doc. Yeah. What doctor? Take you your pick. Plenty of them in the neighborhood. Okay. We'll get over there right away. 
A bartender was assaulted a half an hour ago. Someone answering to clerk's description. A doctor's place was torn apart five minutes ago. Dr. Amos Billings, a block and a half from here. Thank Looks you. like our bird's flushed himself into the open. Came slamming in here, breathing like a truck horse, mumbling in broken English about something to stop a pain. And our lieutenant, a doctor, doesn't just jump for the medicine chest. He suspects a thousand different things. An appendicitis, uh, ulcers, uh, a narcotics addict, especially a narcotics addict. What about a porphyric? That could be. There's abdominal pain connected with porphyria. Aggravated by alcohol, doctor. Now, where did I read about that just recently? Dr. Frank Morton published a paper on porphyria. Oh, yes, yes, the Journal of Medicine. Mm-hmm. Yes, alcohol could set him up. That would increase the abdominal pains and cause unreasoning compulsion. He also took several pills just before coming here. They might have been anodyne. Well, no wonder he tore my place apart. He was looking for sedatives and drugs to kill the pain. But it won't do any good, Lieutenant, because if he finds them, they'll just paralyze and kill him. Then he'll try another place. That is another a... doctor's office. Sure, Beth. For drugs. May I? Please do. On the off chance that he might go back to Doc Morton's, no answer. Well, there should be the nurse or somebody there. You know, just for a minute there, I almost hated that man. I'm going to get over to Doc Morton's. Russ, you go back to the station. Well, right. I, I guess you can't really hate a man who's sick. Well, maybe not, Doctor, but you can be afraid of him. Well, what do you want? Drugs for pain. You want me to help you? You killed my husband. You killed my daughter. You tricked no, me. I kill you. No, he's trying to help you. You lie. They all lie. You... Drugs for pain. All right. All right. I'll give you something for your pain. Not here. Where is medicine? Can't find it. Listen, I'll, I'll write you a prescription. Uh, a prescription, do you understand? It's all right. I know what to write. I, I, I know, I, I used to work for Frank. Now, now look, the only thing that, that you have to, have to worry about is to be sure and take this out of the neighborhood someplace. Out of the neighborhood, you understand me? Uh, someplace where they didn't know Frank. Now, if you have any trouble with this, you tell the druggist to phone me. Telephone, you understand? And I'll confirm it. Go. Oh. Now look. Look, it's late. If you can't find a drugstore open, you go to the Grant Street Hospital. <laughs> they have a form of treatment built all night. And they'll give you what you want. Drugs. <laughs> for Plymouth, Bill Lundigan. Right now, Plymouth sales are snowballing and with good reason. Let me show you why you'll be years ahead and money ahead when you drive a Plymouth. First, Plymouth is years ahead in style. Only Plymouth in the low price field has this long, low look of luxury. Flight sweep styling. And Plymouth is years ahead in comfort. It's the only car in the low price three to offer you the fabulous torsion air ride, greatest engineering advance of the year. Plymouth is years ahead in economy. It costs you less to operate. And as I said before, it is the greatest engineering advance of the year. Plymouth is years ahead in value with exclusive features and low price fields such as total contact brakes, for safe, sure stops. Full-time power steering for unchanging touch control. 
push-button drive, the easiest, most foolproof automatic shift yet devised. Ladies and gentlemen, your years ahead with Plymouth style, your years ahead with Plymouth comfort, your money ahead with Plymouth economy, and your ahead in all ways with Plymouth value. So look ahead, buy ahead, buy Plymouth. Own more of the future right now during Operation Snowball. And now we return to the third act of Trail of Terror, written especially for Climax by Celia Glester and starring Robert Preston, Diana Lynn, and Kurt Kasnar. Mrs. Morton? Miss Nolan? Well, what's the matter? Why didn't you answer me? Why was the front door open? Where is Miss Nolan? I sent her home. Well, we're closing in on Duclerc. We found out he is Emily's father. He's been real busy in the last couple of hours. Russ! Okay, it's all right. I guess he's too smart to make a beeline back here. Not too smart, Lieutenant. Maybe with the dragnet out, we... What was that? I said he wasn't too smart. Hold on, Russ. He was here? Yes. How long ago? Oh, he left about five minutes before you came. Russ, he was here. Alert the radio room. Yeah, left about eight minutes ago. Yeah. Check all drugstores and doctor's offices in the vicinity. I'll keep in touch. Right. What did he want? Drugs? I phoned before. Was he here then? I don't know, Lieutenant. I didn't hear the phone. Well, did you give him any drugs? No. Now, let's take this slow, Mrs. Morton. He came here for drugs, and you didn't give him any, and he quietly turned and went away? Now, that's not reasonable, Mrs. Morton. The man's sick. He wouldn't just turn and walk out of here unsatisfied. You're lying about not giving him the drugs. No, I'm not. I wanted to give them to him. I looked for them. I just couldn't find them. But they'd kill him. I thought I made it clear to you, Lieutenant. I'm not the same kind of a... A good person that you are, or that my husband was. Now, what does that mean? Well, this man, Duclerc, turned around and walked out of here because I gave him what he came for. I forged a prescription for him. You... He's probably even now getting it filled, except I told him to go out of the neighborhood someplace. Someplace where they didn't know Frank. Why, that's cold-blooded murder. You don't seem to understand me, Lieutenant. I hate him. He took out a gun and he shot my husband like that. And the second I was alone and Frank was gone. <gasps> he was gone. You see, you didn't believe me. You didn't believe me any more than Frank would have believed me. He always used to smile and say, oh, now, Julie, you don't really mean that when you have a chance to make it all out, but I do. And this proves it. I gave him that prescription deliberately and it's too late to do anything about it. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> it isn't too late. There is still something you can do. You know where he went. No, Which drug store? no, I don't. Well, what's the matter then? Why are you still fighting yourself? You want me to say it's okay to take a man's life? He took Frank's life. Oh, now, don't be stupid. Don't think that your killing him is going to satisfy your hate. <laughs> it's just the beginning. Tomorrow it'll be the woman down the street because her husband's alive. And the day after it'll be every other woman in the world because she can laugh and talk and be gay while you just indulge yourself in hate. He murdered my husband. Oh, what a terrible stroke of fate. Your husband. Why couldn't it have been somebody else's husband? I've heard the same thing 2,000 times. Me, me, me. My husband, my son, my mother. 
Yes. Oh, is, uh, is Dr. Morton there, please? Uh, this is the Silver Eagle Pharmacy over on Bodrian Fifth. No, he's not. This is his wife. Oh, I see. Well, I have a prescription here. There are some slight irregularities. Perhaps... The irregularities on the prescription? Yes. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Morton. Have we been cut off? Hello. Hello. What would Frank do? Hello. What would Frank do now? Mrs. Morton, hello. He'd want you to do exactly what he'd do, wouldn't he? Hello, hello. I could save him. Hello. Didn't Frank know you better than you know yourself? Uh, don't, don't give it to him. No, it, the prescription isn't any good. He's a prophetic. It'll kill him. Do, do you understand me? Where is he? This is Morton. We've got to call the precinct. We've got to get over there. It's a silver eagle pharmacy. And Baudry and Fifth. This prescription's a fake. You I give me pills? No, I can't give you. You give me pills! Tell Captain Avery to prowl cars. Be on the lookout for doctor's office and drugstores. Yeah. It's just insane. It's insane. Yeah, well, did he get any of the drugs? It just went out of his head. Did he get any of the drugs? Uh, I don't know. Where's the prescription? The, the prescription? Bonnie, I'm going over to the station. Yeah, ma'am. Okay, folks. You can break it up. Right. I want to keep someone at Dr. Morton's house and the drugstore and Dr. Billings, too. Yeah. And where's Shoemaker? All right. Phone in every 15 minutes and let me know where you're at and how you're progressing. Now. Right. I, I know I should know where he is. It's right on the tip of my tongue. Something he said to you. Something you said. I, I, I can't think. It's, it's, it's like it was before and I couldn't remember what he looked like. No, you were trying too hard then. Now, it must be something he told you. Where he was going. What did he say when he took the prescription? Isn't it crazy? You were right. I'm panicked. I can't think for being afraid my husband's murderer is going to die. What was the cause of the accident? Well, you'd better sit down, please. Over here. Now the doctor will be right out. Doctor, emergency waiting room. I heard the doorbell ring and I thought it might be you, so I went to answer it. And it was him. I can... I can see his face. It's that old man's face. With his eyes all filled with pain. And then after that, I didn't see anything. I, I just saw something to hate. I wanted to tear him to pieces. But I was a woman and I wasn't strong enough. And what kept going through my head was, what should I do? What should I do? I can't remember. I, I know that I should know where he is now, but I, I, I can't remember. And all, all my life, I'll never be able to forget that I couldn't remember. Oh, now stop it. Sit down. All right, now. Quietly. Piece by piece. Every second that happened. How long have you had this today? I have since morning. Is it getting worse? Mm. 
my stomach ulcers. You take drugs. Narcotics. Are you allergic to any of the drugs? Do you have a history of pain like this? Nurse, I want a blood count. This could be any one of two dozen different things. Yes, doctor. Well, And I want to ease his pain a little. Have Miss Winters prepare a hypo. Yes. And he wanted drugs. And there weren't any. And then what? Well, he didn't believe me. He was desperate. And then I suddenly thought of writing the prescription. And so I did. I, I even tried to forge Frank's handwriting. And then I said to him... What? I said, be sure and go out of the neighborhood someplace. Someplace where they don't know Frank. What else? And then I said, it's late. If you can't find a drugstore open, go to the Grant Street Hospital. Because they... Russ! <laughs> Yeah, get the Grant Street Hospital on the phone. Two clerks probably there are on his way. Warn them. We'll be there in three minutes. Give me the Grant Street Hospital. Grant Street Hospital? I want to check on the arrival of a... How do I know? Probably off the street. Well, emergency? They're busy. Well, can't you cut in on them? All right, I'll wait. Well, she arranged with Marge to swap and got together four full days of Memorial Day weekend. So when my turn came, I wanted to do the same thing. Only I couldn't find anybody to swap with. Miss. All the oh, just a second, June. Oh, the doctor will be out in a minute. How long have you been on that phone, miss? I'll call you back. Well, here's the doctor now. He's right in there, Miss Winters. Give it to him now. What can I do for you? Have you admitted anyone in the last half hour with severe abdominal pains? Yes. Why? That nurse is just you going to You can't give him any barbiturates, doctor. He's a porphyric. It'll kill him. Pull yourself! I can fight you! Pull yourself! I want to help you! I want to help you! Pull yourself! We're going to be all right. What is it? We're going to take care of you. What is it? So it's all over. I nearly killed a man. If it hadn't been for you, I... Now, what I said didn't stop you. Just gave you a moment to think for yourself is all. Don't forget, I've seen it a few hundred times. Suddenly a woman's all alone in the world. It's frightening. I want to thank you, Lieutenant. Very much. Come on, I'll take you home. How would you like to ride in a police car just once without the siren going? moment you'll meet Nancy Kelly, Mona Freeman, Dean Stockwell, Fred Clark, and Harry Belliver in a preview of next week's exciting Climax program. We're push button, torque flat driving, automatic and a touch. The modern way to drive a car, no lever or no clutch. So simple and convenient, perfect ease and I'm great for driving downhill slow. I'm great for safe get up and go. I just reverse them all, you see. I'm neutral, and you start with me. I'm drive. You use me most by far. And now you know who we all are. Push button, torque flight driving in the great new Ladies and gentlemen, just one of the many optional features exclusive with Plymouth in the low price field is Plymouth's automatic foolproof push button drive. It's the modern way to drive. Just the touch of a finger and your Plymouth is on the go. That's the magic of Plymouth push button drive. So simple and convenient, perfect keys, and now you know. Push button, torque light driving in the great new
know, I'm happy to remind you that all summer, Climax will continue to present for the first time on the air new programs of the highest quality, the tops and stars, and the best in stories. Now, for example, next on Climax, Murder is a Witch. It's the story of a mother and her son in desperate trouble. Normally, a kid in trouble comes to his mother. But what does a mother do if her son's not a kid anymore and the trouble isn't just a schoolboy prank? What if it's something she can't fix, like murder? I have told Les that if he keeps running around with that little hoodlum sooner or later, he has to get into trouble. It just has to happen that way. And of course, it has happened now. Mom, Ron said all I had to do was stay in the car. He didn't say he was going to have a gun. He said he was just going to pretend like he had one. I'm scared, Mom. I'm scared. Mother, you're getting in deeper and deeper. Can't you see that? I think you should do what you should have done in the first place. Go to the police. There's no call to be offensive, Mrs. Marshall. You know, Lieutenant Barrett and I could take your son down to the station house. We could question him there without your interfering with our work. I think you're lying, Mrs. Marshall. I think you and your son have been lying right along. An innocent man with nothing to hide doesn't have to lie, Mrs. Marshall. Especially about where he was last night, when a man was killed. Oh, Les. Oh, Les, my baby. He mustn't be frightened. I'll make it all right. I don't know how I'll do it, but I'll make it all right. Next week, Murder is a Witch, adapted especially for Climax by James P. Cavanaugh, from a novel by John Bingham and starring Nancy Kelly, Mona Freeman, Dean Stockwell, Fred Clark, and Harry Belliver. It's Bill Lundigan saying thank you, and remember, leave sooner and drive slower. Incidentally, I'll be in Cincinnati tomorrow, August 9th and 10th, for the Time Star DeSoto Contest, and in Washington, D.C., on the 11th, 12th, and 13th, for the Teenage Rodeo. Hope you'll drop over and say hello. <laughs> Gilmore speaking, Climax has been selected for viewing by our armed forces overseas. Portions of this program were pre-recorded. This is a CBS Television Network production.